All right, guys, we got our foam here. This is two inch XPS foam. Uh, you may notice that there's two different colors. I got the blue stuff for free and the pink stuff we had to pay for. Um, I'm not too worried about that. All it is is just different brands. The top is Owens Corning and the bottom is DuPont, the one that's blue. There are both, uh, this one's 250 and the DuPont is just 25. All that means is that it's 25 pounds per square inch that this stuff will take. This is perfect for our under slab. So we're just gonna go ahead and lay this stuff down. So we got all of our foam down except for a narrow channel in the middle. We need to cut a little bit for that. And uh, our end pieces, which we are going to sandwich on the inside, um, not leave it on the edge because it's just going to end up falling over. Because we just have a little piece out here that needs to be done. So what we're going to do is cut our narrow strips for the middle and our little pieces here on the end. Okay, so what's nice about these foam boards is that most of them are scored. So you don't have to cut them. It works out perfectly for us. We just had to adjust about an inch out on either side to get 24 inches. So we literally just cut these things in half and we can just set them in our narrow channel. So I just take my knee right to the center, pull back, and it snaps off right like that. Thank goodness that worked out. What's that? To cut this foam board, all we're doing is marking with a blue chalk line. Uh, red if you have the blue stuff, it's a little hard to see. And then we will just cut with a normal circular saw. You can see right here that we uh, just followed the monolithic slab for the top. Um, just took our uh, foam right to here where it angles down at like a 45. Um, and that's the way we're doing our side ends. All right, guys, we got all of our foam on. Um, the next thing that we're going to do now is we have some wire mesh that we're going to lay down. That is going to help us with strength and most importantly, putting down our radiant heat in our garage. It'll have us give us something to tie on to. So uh, I'll give you guys a quick look at what this looks like. There we go. So I'll just uh, go ahead and put some metal down here and we'll call it a day. All right guys, since I didn't get to talk about specifics in camera, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now at the end of the video. The first thing is um, why we even went with insulation. And the reason being is we're putting in radiant floor heat, right? We're running PEX through our concrete. So we wanna protect that heat loss from our concrete and uh, the cold ground beneath it. So we need some type of insulation barrier there. So that's why we are actually even using this stuff. If I wasn't worried about heating the garage um, with radiant floor heat, I probably wouldn't even worry about the insulation. Um, for placement, what we did is we ran um, two four by eight sheets on the outside, um, and then we did our smaller sections on the inside, um, where was a two foot piece that we ran down the inside. It actually was 20 inches, um, but to make things easier on us, we just bumped it out one inch on either side to give us 24 total, or excuse me, I think it was like 22. Um, either way, we just bumped out those four by eight sheets on the outside and laid that two foot piece on the inside. Um, and also for like our um, the length of the, the garage, um, there were some small sections in there. We placed those towards the middle of the pad. Um, that way there was no small pieces out towards the edges that would just kind of fall over. Um, for our utilities coming up through the foam, we just cut them very carefully around there. Um, basically what you're looking for is not to have any large gaps because we didn't tape it or seal that in any way. 
Um, you're just looking for concrete not to get underneath your foam and kind of push it up. We didn't have anything that was greater than a half an inch um, gaps in between our utilities, so I wasn't really worried about it. We didn't tape or do any kind of sealing um, like that. Um, for the amount of insulation that we used, we went with two inch. Now, we did that because I felt like that was like the happy medium that we could get away with. Um, if this was a house, I would definitely 100% use four inches of insulation. Since it's just a garage um, and we're not going to be heating it maybe all the time or as hard as something that you're going to be living in, we went with two inches. Um, I think anything less than that, um, you're getting into where it's not enough. Um, anything greater than two inches, you're running into a cost issue. We used 18 sheets um, of this stuff when we did just the underlayment. Um, and we bought it before like the whole COVID thing. Um, and it was $35 a board at that point. Post COVID 2023, it's stuff is like $50 for a four by eight sheet that's two inches thick. It's insanely expensive. So that would have put us around $900 for just our underlayment. And to double that to four inches would have been $1,800. So it's a huge cost. Um, and you need to be cost effective. So you kind of really got to balance on what you really want to do with it. I think two inches is going to be just fine for us. Anything less, I think it wouldn't be enough. Anything more, and I think it's just too um, cost inhibitive to do that. So two inches was the perfect sweet spot for us. But you guys got to kind of figure out if you're maybe up north more, maybe you're going to want that four inches or maybe just three, you know, laying down some two inch and then one inch over top. Um, also, we just free floated the boards on here. Uh, we didn't secure them in any way. We didn't taper joints because we don't need an additional vapor barrier. We already have that. Um, so we just kind of laid them down um, and free floated them. I wasn't worried about them moving around because we're going to put mesh on top of that, um, so they're not really going to be going anywhere. Uh, we went with XPS. Um, there's also EPS. That's kind of like the styrofoam cup stuff. Uh, there's a whole war on uh, the internet about which one's better. There's a whole bunch of videos and stuff. They say XPS will retain water a little bit more than um, EPS. Um, I don't know, like, it, it insulates, right? It's it's not a big, huge deal. Pick one, do your research. XPS is going to work for me, um, so that's kind of what we went with. Um, so there, it's not really hard. Um, it's just about how much you want to use. Um, and um, we did only run ours up to the um, edge of the monolithic slab. We didn't run any underneath the footer. Um, you can do that if you want to. I just opted not to. We're not doing like a full enclosed envelope on this garage. We're just trying to get where the heat's going to be the most. Um, so yes, there is going to be a little bit of um, coolness underneath the footer versus the slab and stuff. But um, for what we're doing here, I think we kind of got away with um, what is going to work best for us. So... Uh, that's it for this video um, on our foam placement. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.